to Jennifer about the two fat ladies. It's truly thrilling. And now Clarissa. It's out of here. Well, there you have it, two fat ladies. Back to back episodes tonight at 7 Eastern. And this goes into a 350 degree oven in a pan of water. I already have one in there. That's one that's going to, A1 that's going to come out. I have several cakes going here because I just want you to see everything. Now, that's going to go in that pan of water. And the reason, now this is something new <clears throat> also in this cake of baking it in a bain marie so that it rises up very slowly and it's supposed to rise up to just about the top of the pan. You want to set your timer for <clears throat> an hour and the cake is done when you can stick a little skewer in or a little knife and the knife comes out clean. And we're going to see if this has done that. And it has. That's perfectly clean. So this is done, but it still isn't done yet. It has to stay warm for half an hour. And I've got a warming oven there and then another cake in there. But you bake it for about an hour till the skewer comes out clean. Then set it either in a warming oven or leave it in the pan of, in the pan of water with the oven door slightly ajar and then leave it out for half an hour more and then it should be ready to unmold. And I have this, had this one waiting so it would be just right, I hope, in a square pan. And this is a no-stick pan which I think is much better, much safer, we hope, This is a very delicate cake, as you will see, and, and very, a very soft one, so that's why it sits for a while. And out she comes. And then peel the paper off. And this cake, I think, is much best when it's served slightly warm, because it's so delicate and nice. And I'm going to, you can cover it with either powdered sugar or whipped cream, but I just want you to see what it's like. I'm going to cut you a piece of it. And you can see how, see how delicate that is. And I have here in my hand, practically, a beautiful piece of beef. I just got a large one to show you. Because you can buy these very often all packaged up. This is a loin strip, and the loin strip that's, there's your hip and there's the, your 13th rib and the loin is right in here. And this is, if you, if you have a porterhouse steak, you have the T-bone and then the large piece of meat on one side and the small piece of meat, which is the tenderloin. The large piece of meat is the top loin or loin strip. And I think that's the best cut for the steak, Diane. And you want to have the steaks cut half an inch thick. I'm just going to do one for you to show how it goes, leaving that beautiful piece of meat so we can all admire it. This is a beautiful piece of meat. It's, uh, it's prime beef, and it's nicely marbled. And then you want to take all the fat and the gristle off it. You'll notice, see right up here near, at the large end, there's a little piece of gristle right along under the fat. You want to be sure and get that off. And get yourself some good knives. So that they're really sharp. You can save a bit of that off. Don't throw it away. Save it for getting off extra bits of meat. You can make a little sauce with that. And there's another little bit of trimming. And then this is going to be pounded. And the reason it's going to be pounded is to make it thinner so that it's going to cook in about 
half a half a minute on each side. So take some a piece of wax paper, and I have a a pounding spoon here. This was given to me in La Jolla by a friend whose husband does a lot of abalone hunting, and it's very heavy, and it makes good for pounding all kinds of things. And then pound it between wax paper. And you want to pound it down to a thickness of about a quarter of an inch. Now we're going to season this, and this is, these are, I should show you these a little more clearly. Those are fresh green peppercorns. In other words, it's not dry, they're fresh, and they've been packed in brine. You can get them anywhere. And I think they don't have any taste unless you mash them up. And then what I like to do, see, there isn't any definite recipe for this, so you can make up your own. I like to put a little bit of soy sauce on there, and then a little bit of olive oil just to flavor it up. And the olive oil carries the taste of the marinade a little bit, and it also keeps the steak from keeps the steak from sweating, I think. Then turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. And if you have these fresh peppercorns, I find it's best to keep them in a covered jar in the refrigerator, and then they keep for a long time. There's a little bit of soy sauce. I want to say I think soy sauce is a marvelous invention. And a little bit of olive oil, again. And then that gets rolled up. And rolling up, if you're going, particularly if you're going to do them ahead, seems to me keeps them better. Well, I have three more there, all prepared. And that looks very nice, and they'll be presented that way.